message tonight, and we're going to be learning all about Elijah's first miracle. So we're going to get some praise and worship in. We're going to receive communion tonight. And we also have a very, 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 very special person in here tonight. Who do y'all know? Who do y'all think it is? Yes, y'all, we have our very own Pastor Kathy, and it's going to be amazing. So let's go ahead and pray and okay, get into everyone, our service. We have a new word verse for this month. This verse is all about the answered prayer. John 14, 12 says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. This is what I say to you. He who believes in me, the works will do, he'll do us. I win greater works that he will do. Because I got, I got, I got to my father. John 14, 12 is true. Believe in him, great works you'll do. John 14, 12 is true. Believe in him, great works you'll do. This is what I say to you. He who believes in me, the works will do, he'll do us. John 14, 12 is true, believe in him, great work shall do. John 14, 12 is true, believe in him, great work shall do. John 14, 12. John 14, 12. John 14, 12. 14, 12. Do you think you had it down yet? Yeah! Let's sing it again. Come on. This is what I say to you. He who believes in me, the works I do, he'll do all so and great. I go, I go, I go to my father. John 14, 12 is true, believe in him, great work shall do. John 14, 12 is true, believe in him, great work shall do. This is what I say to you. He who believes in me, the works I do, he'll do also. Greater work, the things he will do. Because I go, I go, I go to my father. John 14, 12 is true, believe in him, great work shall do. John 14, 12 is true, believe in him, great works you'll do. John 14, 12. John 14, 12. John 14, 12. kids, it's time to learn and grow. So get out your Bible and your notebook and write down what stands out to you today because the Holy Spirit is going to speak to you. It's now time to learn and grow. I have a little experiment up here that I want to do for you. So I want you to pay attention. Now what we have here is a container of water, right? Yes, ma'am. And what is this? An egg. So I'm going to gently drop this egg in this container of water and let's see what happens to this. What happens to it? What did it do? It went to the bottom. Do you see that? Does everybody see that this egg went to the very bottom of the container? Okay, now I'm gonna try something else. This is called an experiment. So I'm gonna put this over here so you can see it really clearly. And I'm going to take this container of water and I'm gonna add something to it before I add the egg. So watch what I do with this. This is salt. How many of you like salt on your french fries? Yes. French fries won't be french fries without a little salt. Not a whole lot. No, that's salt water. This is a lot of salt water. This is a lot of salt water. Yes. You'll drink it? No, I don't think so. No, we're not, we're not passing it around so you can drink. No, I'm gonna stir it up really good. You know what this is really good for? If it's warm, if you have a sore throat, you can gargle with warm salt water. 
I didn't say drink it, I said gargle. You know what that is? And then spit it out, right? Okay. So look, I think I've got it stirred up sufficiently. What do you think? Okay. So now I'm going to put this egg in it and see what happens when I put this egg in it. Gently. Did you see it? Can you see it? It pops up to the top. It came to the top. Now I'm trying to get it down like the other egg. Nope. It's not going, is it? Can you see it? It's not going down. It's not going down. It's staying on the top. All right. So I did all that so you could understand something very special about salt. Just like that egg rose to the top, right? The Bible says, look at me, that you are the salt of the earth. Okay, so you are like this egg in this world. And see, when you go and tell people the salt, the salt of the earth, because you are the salt of the earth, say, I'm the salt. I'm salt. You're the salt of the earth, and you have, you have savor. That means flavor, right? So that's why we put salt on our french fries, because it makes them better, right? So this, if this container represents your world, our world, then you're the salt and you help things rise to the top instead of being in darkness. If we say this is darkness, this is hell, and this is heaven. So when you tell somebody about Jesus, guess what? They don't go to hell. They rise up. They rise up so they can go to heaven, right? Heaven is up, hell is yeah. down. You got it? Yeah. So we are influencing this egg representing people. Do we want our world to be full of people who are on their way to hell? No, no not at all. That's why we have to be salt. We have to be salty, okay? So there's a verse in the Bible where Jesus talked about this, and I'm going to put this verse on the board. It's found in Matthew 5:13. Matthew 5:13. Write it down if you're taking notes, and go ahead and put it on the board if you can, please. So let's just look at it, okay? And this is Jesus speaking. You know, if you have a red letter edition of a Bible, which I do. I don't know if you can see the red, but every, every time Jesus spoke, listen, every time Jesus spoke, it's in red, and it really helps you to get to know Jesus, because you want to hear what he has to say, right? There's a lot of good things, a lot of good people talking in the Bible, but we want to hear what Jesus has to say, and this is one of the things Jesus said. He said, you are the salt of the earth. But look, there's a contingency here. It says, but if the salt has lost its savor. Savor means flavor. Like those french fries without salt, kind of yucky, huh? Like mashed potatoes without salt. Ooh, kind of yucky. Gravy without salt, kind of yucky, okay? So he's saying, he's saying we're the salt, but we don't want to lose our flavor, okay? We're going to talk about that. If you are not flavorful, if you've lost your flavor, look what it says. Wherewith shall it be salted? In other words, how will the world be salted? How will the world know about Jesus if we lose our salt flavor? The world won't. That's exactly right. It is henceforth, what does it say? If we lose our savor, if we lose our flavor, we're good for what? Read it. Good for what? Good for nothing. 
And then it says, to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot of men. So turn to your neighbor and say, don't lose your flavor. Don't lose your flavor. That's right. We don't want to lose our flavor because we are the salt of the earth. We have what it takes to get people out of going to hell, which is down, and raise them up just like that egg was raised up. We tell them the good news so they can go to heaven. Now, tonight we're going to talk about a man named Elisha. Elisha. Yeah, so we've talked about his story before, but I want you to hear some things that he did, his miracle. Now remember, Elisha followed Elijah. Isn't that amazing? Elijah was a prophet, and Elisha followed right behind him. Everywhere Elisha, Elijah went, Elisha was right there behind him. He was learning how to be a prophet. And so he's getting ready to do his first miracle. Now he already watched, and we talked about this on Sunday, where he took off the cloak. And what did he do to the Red Sea? He parted the Red Sea. First Elijah did. Elijah parted the Red Sea by taking off his cloak or his outer robe and hitting the water, right? Yes. And the water departed and they walked across on dry ground. Just he and Elijah. So then when they got to the other side, what happened to the water? Yes. Came back down, came back together, right? Well, then they went over there and what happened? What happened? Elijah left. He didn't die. He didn't die. A chariot of fire came down from heaven and got him. He got in the chariot. And then as he was going up, he took that cloak off and he gave it to Elisha. And so Elijah's gone. He's in heaven right now, just like you and me, with a dirt body. He's up there. So this is what happened. Elisha picked up that cloak and walked right back, because he had to go across the Red Sea to get back to the town he was in. And he, he said, well, I'm going to do it too. So he took his cloak, and he flung it in the water. And what happened? The water parted, just like Elijah did it. So then he goes into this town, and let me tell you, he goes into the town, and this is what happened. You can read it in 1 Kings 2, verse 19. If you're taking notes, write this down. We're going to put it on the board because Elisha is starting his ministry. He's starting to do things now. He's starting to follow after what Elijah did. So this is what it says. The men of the city said to Elisha, notice, they said, notice the situation in this city is pleasant. In other words, it's a really nice city that we have here. But, but something was wrong with the water. He said, but the water is bad. The water is bad and the ground is barren. Yuck. The water is bad. If the water's bad, then they can't water the crops, right? Yeah. So, so they have no crops. They have nothing to drink. Sad situation, right? Not a good situation. So let's go on. This is what happened. Elisha was a prophet who did miracles. Remember, we're talking about miracles by faith. And so Elisha said, bring me a bowl, a new bowl, a clean bowl. And he put salt in it, much like I put salt in this container of water. But he put salt in it. And then he went out to the source of water, or he went out to that source, and he took the salt 
and threw it in the water. You understand? He threw the salt in the water. And then he said, thus says the Lord. In other words, did he just do this on his own? No. no. He didn't just think about this. This is what God told him to do. Do you understand? You don't do miracles without God telling you what to do. That's why we have to listen to God with our inside ears and follow his instructions. You see? So it says that the Lord said, I have healed this water. From now on, there shall be no more death or barrenness. In other words, the water's good now. I've healed the water. It's going to be good. You can drink it. The crops will grow now. And so they were very happy with this, right? Uh -huh. Wouldn't you be happy? Yes. You know, one time I took a train ride with my aunt. And we went from El Paso to East Texas. On the way down there, you sit and you go like this the whole time. You're going back and forth, back and forth because of the train ride on the train tracks. And so halfway through, something happened to the water. And I went to the water fountain because they have water on a train, right? I went to the water fountain and it was yellow. Ew. Ew, it was horrible. The water coming out of the water fountain was yellow with dirt in it. Something had happened. Well, Elijah was, Elisha wasn't there to heal the water, but I just remember nobody on the, on the train could drink water the whole way to Dallas. So when I can understand these people, they're saying, we got a problem. This is a nice city, but the water's yuck. So we need help with the water. But Elisha performed his first miracle. And he used salt to do it. He used the salt that he cast that into the water and it became perfect. Why did he do that? Not because he thought it was a good idea, but because God told him to do that, right? And there was a mighty miracle. And so there was no more death. I guess people were drinking that water and dying. It wasn't maybe as yellow as that water was on the on the train but people were dying so there was no more death there was no more barrenness and so they were happy again they rejoiced with the miracle that he had performed and so what do we do with this information what do we do elijah elisha brought healing to the water right he brought healing to the water in that city and this is what we're called to do we're called to bring healing in our world. Now, the way that we heal, we don't get salt and pour it in the water. You understand? That's not the way. We are the salt, right? We are the salt. I am the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. We're the salt because we have good news. Do you understand? We have good news. You have good news because you know Jesus. You know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And just like that verse says, we don't want to lose our savor. We don't want to lose our flavor. Because we want to be excited to tell people about Jesus. How can a Christian lose the, their flavor? How can a Christian lose their flavor? Stepping into the world. That's exactly right. Stepping into the world. In other words, I don't want to go to church. I don't want to read my Bible. I don't want to pray. See, when you get that attitude, what are you doing? You're losing your flavor. You're losing your flavor. See, God wants you to be excited about what Jesus did for you. Just like we had three little girls last Saturday go into Big Cheese. And what did they do? They ministered Jesus. They were salty. They were flavorful. They went over to people who were sitting at their tables and told them about Jesus. And how many people got saved, Sadie? Six people? Eight? Eight people got saved 
because these little girls had plenty of flavor and they did not they did not lose their savor so this is what we're to do we're called to bring healing just like elisha brought healing to that water and there's something else we can do besides telling people about jesus we can lay hands on the sick right we can do that we can have a physical healing a manifestation of that with no doctor and no medicine that is a miracle right that is a miracle but let me tell you even when we speak the word and sometimes i know when we tell people about jesus they say no i don't want i don't want to know right now you planted good seeds you planted seeds right you planted seeds of the word of god and let me tell you one last scripture this is what it says in psalms 107 20. psalms 107 20 can you put it up he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions so this this word brings healing it brings healing it brings healing you know when my girls would have a stomach ache or something i would pray over them and then i would tell them go read your bible go read your bible you'll feel better because this the bible says this is medicine the word is medicine it brings healing to you but when we speak the word over people and tell them Jesus loves you God loves you he's got a good plan for your life when we tell them these things then we're bringing healing to them we're bringing healing to them because we're speaking the word isn't that what that scripture said he sent his word God sent us his word to not only heal us but so we could put it in our heart and heal others and what do you expect when you when you present the Word of God what can you expect you can expect that people will receive Jesus they won't go to hell because you're salty they will be they'll rise to the top and be able to go to heaven do you understand bow your heads and close your eyes father in the name of Jesus I thank you for every child that's here I declare that they've had ears to hear and they will be salt in their world they will never lose their flavor they will always be salty so they can tell other people about Jesus and bring healing and wholeness just like Elisha did with that water and we thank you for this lesson that inspires us to do what Elisha did and that speak the word and obey God and people are helped hurting people are helped well listen with your heads bowed and your eyes closed I want to ask you if you're in here tonight and you've never said yes to Jesus if you've never said Jesus come into my life I want to be saved I don't want to go to hell like this egg that fell to the bottom I want to go to heaven I want to float to the top I want to go to heaven I want to be a child of God I want God to be my daddy and I want I want to live this life according to the word if that's you tonight just raise your hand if you want me to pray for you to be saved to be born again let's all bow our heads and repeat this prayer after me say father in the name of Jesus I thank you for sending Jesus to die for me and right now I confess Jesus as my Lord I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead and I thank you for saving me in Jesus name Amen. making Jesus the Lord of your life is such a big deal make sure to go to our Connect Center or email us at info kids at choosefobs.com and let us know the next step is being water baptized. Water baptism is an outward sign of what happens inside whenever you make Jesus the Lord of your life. So make sure to get with your parents on being water baptized. Congratulations, guys, on making Jesus the Lord of your life.